We are here at the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum, and as you can see, there is going to be lots for us to explore throughout the day today. We are starting things off up in the fly zone where you can actually do a VR simulated flight, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, Whitney's joining me, and we're going to be getting myself strapped up That's into right. there in a minute. But first, tell me a little bit about this program. It's cool. Yes, it is. So Fly Zone is our new motion uh, VR simulator. It's a full motion experience. So you have a VR headset on, mm -hmm. and you also have your strapped into the chair, and the chair moves with you. So kind of as you're moving and you're feeling your experience, the chair moves with you. How many people finish the experience and say, OK, I want to be a pilot now? <laughs> Actually, you know what? The response has been really great for yeah. it. We have people kind of with different levels. Some people have never done it before. Some people are experienced pilots, and they all have a great time up here. Now, if they're an experienced pilot, do they say that it actually mimics flying a plane, or are they like, no, that's not even close? <laughs> but it was still fun, but not yeah, even so close. Yes, so actually, when we designed the missions, we actually had them come up here, test it out, tell us, like, it doesn't feel light enough, kind of make some tweaks with really? it. Really? So we've got a really good response from them, and if they give us the OK, then we just go ahead. All right, I'm ready. Let's get me all into right, this machine. All right, let's get you into the chair. All right, so have a seat there. So today, Whoa. you are doing a P-51 Mustang mission. Of course I am. All right. P-51 Mustang, P Mustang mission. P-51 Mustang mission. Whoa. So, <laughs> we'll as it is chair. customary in VR, yeah. I'll kind of show you the magic of this chair. So right now, you're in it, and we're going to get you centered. So the chair does move a little bit, which is why you have to kind of be strapped in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a harness. Yep. So the harness will keep you leveled here. Okay. So you have two around you, and they all connect to this guy right here. So we're going to loop that around. Okay. Oops. Thank you, Tommy. Okay. So we're just going to snap that in place. So you have one to the side and two over your shoulder. Okay, one to the side. Yes. Right there, perfect. Okay. And then just two over your shoulder there. Okay, it, here's perfect. one. One. And two. Okay, ready. Perfect. All right. So have you done some flying before ever? No. Sort of. <laughs> okay, so you're actually gonna have a teammate today. Amazing. So she's gonna be over to the side kind of wave at each other. Okay. So she'll be on the side there, and you're going to be trying to target your enemies around you. Okay? Target my enemies? Target the enemies around you. So you let me know if it looks clear or if it's a little bit blurry. No, we're How's clear. That That's clear? Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to put your hand to your throttle, just so you know what that is. So that's going to do your speed. Okay. So increase speed, decrease speed. Okay. <laughs> Your console, so you're gonna just hold that on your waist there. You're gonna put your hand there. Okay, so just the basics for you. So, your pitch will be mm -hmm. think of this as the nose of your plane. So, if you're going like this, you're diving, yep. okay, you're climbing towards you, and okay. then your trigger button will be this one right here in the back here. Oh, this one, all right, that this one, one? Right there. yes, okay, all right. So, it's gonna be a bit, a bit of a sensation, okay, I'm ready, <laughs> all right, but we'll start in five seconds. All right, guys, I'm a little nervous, all right. But if you come so. to the museum, this is something you definitely, whoa, <laughs> oh, you definitely have to try. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is amazing yet terrifying <laughs> all at the same time. Oh, it's so beautiful up here. It is, right? Like the map is fantastic and you have a full 360 view around you. Is it weird so you feel your that like <laughs> I am totally, my body feels so weird right yes, now. Yes, yes. <laughs> So it's fully immersive, and obviously having the chair move with you and being in the VR kind of gives you like that full range of experience, like you're there, Ooh, right? Shooting my guns. Shooting your guns. I don't have any planes around me, though. That's so good. what we're going to do, if you're looking for targets, we're going to make a left turn, a nice smooth left turn, and just go up the coastline, Whoa. and you should see a sea of red. All right, well, I'm going to continue <laughs> playing my game here. I know I'm running out of time, but this is yes. amazing. So see the enemy targets? Those are the red guys right there. So just oh, yeah. go towards them, and okay. you'll be set. All right, lots more coming up on Morning Live <laughs> from the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. Animals in Wartime Propaganda Exhibit is where you find us now in the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. It is a brand new exhibit and it is absolutely gorgeous. The posters are beautiful and the meaning behind these posters 
even better because it wasn't just people fighting in wars. There were tons of animals involved. I've got Craig here, and Craig is partly responsible for putting this beautiful exhibit together. These posters, they really speak to people. Well, they do, and I mean, who doesn't love animals, yeah. right? So, yeah, so it, it was a bit of an appeal to everybody in this. Um, yeah. Uh, was it hard to find them? Yes. Uh, th they're difficult to come by nowadays, as you can imagine, but a yeah. lot of them were bought on au at auctions and mm -hmm. some of them online auctions and so forth. Um, my wife is really the one, the visionary. She's yeah. the one that put the collection together. I'm more like, on occasion, the, you know, the historical consultant, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but, uh, so you've got some great stories about a couple of these prints. I, I do. Uh, there's some interesting background to a number of them. I mean, okay. they're, they're all interesting. Yeah, but, give me a uh, couple. Well, um, well, this one over here is quite fascinating in that uh, it, it, this particular poster was meant for um, like a, the lobby of a theater, a cinema. Really? Because uh, this is a National Film Board yep. uh, production, and it's only a 15, 20 minute film. Uh, in a propaganda film, World mm -hmm. War II, and it's about the role of uh, the passenger pigeon um, in saving lives because, of course, when the air crews went out, uh, you know, to bomb Germany or later in the war bombing France uh, in preparation for D-Day, they would carry a, a passenger pigeon yeah. on board in case they got shot down in the channel. And then the passenger, and the pigeon, passenger pigeon would go and send would, a note. Yeah, the homing pigeon would home in on the homeland on, on Britain and uh, um, yeah, that's fascinating. Help, help them be rescued by the coastal command. Yeah, that's fascinating. It's yeah. like you have your own little hero on board. Yeah, in fact, you need them. Um, um, there's actually a, a, I think it's over 200 passenger pigeons were given what is sort of the animal equivalent of the Victoria Cross. Wow. They were given what's called the Dickin Dickin Medal, and uh, the the motto of the Dickin Medal is we too serve. So it's kind of touching, you know, that because of course a lot of the passenger pigeons would fly all the way back to Britain and then yeah. they'd collapse from exhaustion and yeah, that would be course. the end of them, you know. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, you think of it, you think, oh, well, you know, they're just birds, but they're birds that save lives. Yeah. This yeah. one struck me. That's Even a, a dog list. Yeah, Why that's a really you? striking poster. Yeah. Um, it's actually an American poster, but from World War I. But uh, it uh, obviously is, you know, working on the, the mm -hmm. principle of shame. You know, yeah, like totally. if a dog's going to do all that work at the why front, wouldn't why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, well, and dogs did. I mean, they yeah. were trained to go out. Uh, a lot of times when there was an attack, the um, if the attack would get bogged down in no man's land, the men would find themselves in shell craters, and they'd find themselves running low on ammo, on water. You know, they couldn't move or they'd be yeah. shot. And the but dogs they'd send out it. the dogs, and the dogs would bring all the necessities to them, yeah. Well, every poster has a story in here. You've got to come and check out this exhibit. We're going to do a little bit more touring of the museum, and I'm going to go up in an airplane. All of that coming up, but oh, now I'll send things back inside the <laughs> studio. Well, it is not only airplanes that they have here. Check it out. I am in a 79 Camaro. How amazing is this car? Al, you've got a really special event happening this weekend. Tell us a little bit about it. Yes, yes, we do. It's our... Uh, Vintage uh, Wings and Wheels show on Sunday starts at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. We'll have probably almost four four hundred uh, vintage cars. Wow! Everything that's 20, uh, 20 years and older. Uh, they're all registered here. And one thing I should mention is it's pre-registration only, and we are completely at max capacity for the vintage cars. But we do have lots of room for the general public to come up and see. And uh, our fingers are crossed the weather is going to be great. I know we're holding. We yeah. may see some showers, but you know what? A little bit of rain never hurt anybody. Wow, that door is incredibly heavy. Now, the cars are going to be on display kind of out on the tarmac? Out on the tarmac, yeah, all the air, and plus you get to see our collection of aircraft, almost 40 uh, aircraft in the collection to be seen as well. So it's it's a great, uh, great day for people who love vintage. Yeah, so they can come out, they can check out the cars, they can check out the airplanes, and they get to tour the entire museum. Absolutely. Okay, this is, what kind of car is this? This is, this is a Plymouth? 32 Plymouth. Wow, 1932 Plymouth convertible coupe. What a great looking car. And of course they all run. Absolutely, they yeah. all run. It's the only way they get here. I guess. Yeah. Wow, it's so interesting that people spend the time and the energy and the focus to keep these cars in such great condition. Yeah, and that's, that's the great thing about our show is 
400 people are signed up to bring their car, we actually don't ask them what car they're bringing. So it's kind of a surprise oh, for fun. us to find out what they're bringing. <laughs> as long really... as it's a vintage car. As long as... So, like, if I owned, like, a 2002 Honda Pilot, is that vintage? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's 20 years old. It is. So, yes, but we don't see too many of those. So you, you don't most... want me to come with my Pilot, then? No. <laughs> Okay, well, coming up, we are going to be taking a flight in the sky in an itty-bitty tiny airplane. That is coming up on Warring Live, so make sure you stay with us because you're not going to want to miss that. The things I do for television. Well, I'm here oh, at the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum, and I'm about to take flight. Emily, tell me a little bit about the flight program you guys have here. We have an awesome flight program. We have about 10 aircraft available for people to come fly in, including this one. So this is the Harvard Trainer. Okay. It is an excellent flight. You are going to have so much now, fun. When you say trainer, this yes. is what pilots train on? It is, in World War II. So this would have been what they trained on before learning to fly a fighter plane. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so now so, is Dave still in training? Dave's not in training. No, he is good to go. He is Dave, when did Dave get his license? Uh, I don't. A lot. A while ago. We'll not say. last week. Not right? last week. Okay, good. So can anybody take these flights? Anyone can take these flights. So warplane.com. We have all the information on our website. Uh, you do need to be a museum member to come fly with us. It's okay. a year-long membership, and it's great because it means that you get to come visit the museum under your membership for free whenever you want. And it's true because you guys are a nonprofit organization. We are, and this is a great way for us to uh, make some revenue for the museum mm -hmm. while teaching people about aviation. I mean, it makes a great gift. Yeah, we I see love a that. lot of birthday presents. We see a lot of retirement presents. Mm. It is an awesome experience to buy for someone you love, someone you care about, or even for yourself. If you just love aviation, come on out and come for a flight. Yeah, if it's just yeah. something you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's going to take a while to get this off the ground, so I think we're going to get okay. things started. You're ready? I'm ready. All right, you're going to have a great time. Okay, wish me luck. Good luck. Bye. Bye. I'm going to close my hatch now. They taught me how to do it. Maverick style. Wait. <laughs> That was amazing. Come here, fly in the planes, you will not regret it.